Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Animania. Today I'm covering how to automate the trough to feed your animals. This is my small barn. I have my big one back there, which you may have seen in the previous episode. I have a little bit of redstone stuff going on here, and I'm going to be showing you how to, uh, well, set up your trough so it can be automated. Now right now it has some wheat in it, and if I right click it, I take the wheat out, it automatically refills. Pretty nifty, right? Well, it's it's not too bad. I mean, this is vanilla mechanics. There are more reliable ways that you can actually work with this. But uh, I am going to show you some of the basics here. Now, of course, you could also feed into it uh, water or slop if you are feeding pigs. Um, now, uh, slop is, of course, created uh, with uh, some other things in here. Let's see. Uh, slop uh, is made uh, like so, you know, with any two vegetables, more or less, plus some kind of milk. Uh, we'll get you a bucket of slop that you can also feed in, uh, or you could use water if you so desire. Now, of course, cows will devour water uh, blocks, but they will not, uh, you know, de uh, destroy refillable ones if they're automatically refilling. Now, in this case, um, the, the, this is kind of a secondary one, because if I take an empty bucket and I bucket out this uh, water here, now it will refill again, but you can see here that my current method uh, kicks out an extra bucket. Which makes sense. I mean, I mean, I can pretty much just, you know, bucket it out and it'll keep on uh, filling the uh, buckets in there. Let me put one back in here. Uh, I can pretty much fill it back out. Now, if I were to get a, um, a cow in here and it would start drinking this, it would actually reduce it enough that I could not actually fill a bucket with it. But what I recommend instead, if you're going to just use uh, water, is just a two by two square. Uh, of water now uh, that you would fill in here. Now, of course, I have a little bit of some stuff going on below. So in this case, I'm going to actually fill in this area here and put some water down there. And that way, when I put this down, let's grab some of this, put this up against here and this up against here. There we go. Now, I, I of course, have nothing underneath the foundations in this case, but at the very least, the cows would be able to get to this one block of water and it would be inexhaustible uh, because the other water would constantly refill in. And it's a much more reliable and simpler method than what uh, I'm about to show you. Now, of course, uh, this one here does require a bit of underground stuff if you want to make it a little bit more hidden. But I, I did kind of a mixture uh, above ground and below ground. So you can see what is exactly going on here. Now, I'm going to remove a section of the wall just so you can see what is happening. Uh, let's remove a bit of this. And a bit of this, take out this this window as well. There we go. Now you can see here I have a trough and I placed down the trough uh, like so. Let me actually place it down. And you can see the block that I place it down is the block that is going to actually give a, uh, a signal to a comparator. Now you'll know this by uh, when you put down a couple comparators next to it, you put a piece of wheat inside. The one side that you placed it on, which is the block that I placed it, is the one that's going to give the signal to a comparator. Now, if I have something like a redstone repeater, it's not going to give a signal. It also is not going to give a signal to a piece of redstone. Uh, so it only works with comparators currently. <laughs> Therefore, it's a little bit finicky, a little bit tricky. Uh, but uh, you can make yourself uh, some kind of uh, machine that would work. Now, in this case, I had it go through a wall, so it was a little bit less visible to, you know, the cows or something like that. You can work this out however you'd like. But this is my current method here that I am using uh, just to give an example of how to automate this. You have a comparator coming out here, feeding into a redstone repeater, which of course maximizes the uh, the redstone signal uh, up to, uh, you know, I believe it's 15 is what it is. And then it feeds into another redstone comparator, which uh, is less than that of a reduced redstone torch. Uh, I put it a couple of blocks away so that it's actually uh, broadcasting like a 12 or a 13 uh, from the redstone torch. Uh, and uh, therefore, it's going to be uh, less of a signal coming in the back higher signal coming in on the side. Now, if I only have a redstone comparator coming off of a trough with stuff here, allow me to uh, plop down a trough, put a piece of wheat in there, drop a comparator, and actually put down some redstone, you'll see that, that it only has a signal of one. So it, it's not very powerful. This is why I buffed it up with a, uh, a repeater. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I am by no means an engineer of redstone. Uh, I, am, I am very poor when it comes to redstone, and this is a, a rather large and bulky machine that I've made. But it works, and therefore you could use it too. Now, in this case, the uh, comparator here uh, is getting a lesser signal on the back than the signal which is maximized here. So therefore it will uh, send out a higher signal if this is empty. 
So if this is empty, then it will actually not give a signal. Uh, and therefore, it'll, it'll work the way as intended. Now, anyway, anyway. Uh, so if you just have comparator feeding into a repeater, feeding into the side of a comparator, of which the back of it is fed by a redstone torch at least a couple blocks away with some redstone, and then that comparator is at the front leading into a repeater. And then you could always feed this, as you'll see here. I'm going to actually remove some of the grass so you can see what's going on. There we go. I have redstone going down underneath, and it feeds to the block underneath the dropper. So when I remove the, uh, the wheat, it automatically refills as such. So therefore, you can actually have this automatically feeding your pets. Now, currently, the problem is that if you have a dropper down below, which, by the way, if you have a, uh, a dropper, you're going to want to face down when placing it so that it will actually launch up. Or you could actually have it coming in from the side if you want, you know, but you're going to want to have it feeding the one block that is going to be giving the redstone signal as well. You're not going to want to feed from the other side. Uh, but th there's a problem with uh, droppers and dis uh, dispensers, which I'm sure many are familiar with in vanilla mechanics. And that is if you have a dropper uh, or even a dispenser for that matter, but I'll, I'll put these in here and I'll plop down a redstone torch. You see, it kind of launches the stuff out. So therefore, if you're near this, uh, like let's say within a couple blocks of the trough when that activates, you might accidentally pick up the, uh, the wheat. Let, let me stand here closer. And you'll see I can't actually pick anything up because the wheat has actually already been picked up. <laughs> it's kind of weird that way. Let me go grab some of this wheat here. In fact, let me grab a bunch of it. You'll see I've got 34 wheat. I can then feed it in place one two three and that's maximum it was actually empty it's just a little rendering glitch uh, it's probably going to be fixed i've reported the bug but in the meantime if you experience that that is how it works now you see there i just picked up that piece and it's not going to re uh, actually refill again until you are further away and you fill it yourself now if i stand further away i take it out it's just fine so there you go that is a simple straightforward method of uh, just trying to get yourself some automated troughs. Now that does work, as I showed before, with uh, like slop or other uh, materials that you want to put in there. Uh, uh, I believe slop, water, uh, and uh, wheat are some of the items that you can put in a trough. But uh, I, I do recommend if you want to give your animals uh, water that you just do like an infinite uh, square. Even if in your area there, uh, let me let me out. Uh, in your area here, you uh, try and do this. Chickens will not uh, drink the entire uh, square, so you don't have to do that. But you could, because if you're worried about babies getting out, like up and underneath this area, you, you don't have to worry about it too bad. You, you could always just have it in the current area that they're at and then just fill it in there. And they may even have a little fun time splashing around. So I, I recommend that you just have like a two by two of water in any of your pet pens or uh, animal pens. And that should probably take care of any of your issues with uh, feeding them water going forward. Because uh, as I said before, a cow or bull uh, will actually devour an entire water block, whereas chickens will not. But uh, it, it would be a problem if you only had one block of water in there. But if you have a two by two, it shouldn't be any issue. The only ever issue you might run into is if uh, multiple cows drink uh, two ne neighboring blocks of water at the same time. Uh, of which case you could always, like I said before, you know, try and feed it underneath a wall or something like that. That is uh, uh, not as so s slim as a, uh, uh, a fence, uh, but more sturdy like a block like this so that uh, critters cannot just kind of sneak out underneath they're not going to come out this other side because they're small critters so you don't have to worry about that and uh, yeah I, I realize i've kind of halfway destroyed my barn but i just wanted to show you guys how you could automate this i know that it's a simple vanilla way um, actually it's a, a more complex vanilla way I hope it helps some of you out there with uh, feeding your animals in your pet farm. Uh, let's see if I can actually get a decent view of this so you guys can see how it looks. Uh, I will I'll try and try and kind of make a little bit of a space here. So if you want to uh, have a moment to uh, view what this looks like, you can actually see it here. And then I will just do a little bit of a screenshot. And there you go. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to spread the mischief to others. Uh, I do enjoy doing a lot of these bit by bits, and I know a lot of people really do enjoy them. 
Uh, I try to make it as straightforward as I can, but I also try to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, so I hope this one wasn't uh, too boring for you, but uh, hey, you know what? Sometimes you just need a little bit of help with a little bit of automation so that you don't always have to run out and feed your pets four or five times a day. You can actually put a bunch into your dispenser and have things taken care of for you. So anyway, that's about it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, folks, I'll see ya. <laughs>